Well, here we are, Pastor Jeff. Uh, this looks a little different than what we're used to, uh, but for good it's reason. It's not as comfortable. I'm not on the yeah, couch. Yeah, no, true. Yeah, no couch. Not as comfortable. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, but we've been talking about wanting to do a little bit of a, a little longer form on some deeper topics um, and just to go through what the text says. Um, how do we debunk things too? Yeah. Because we know in our culture, there's, yeah. there's a lot of influence of people misusing uh, the Bible, misusing the worldviews. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty pretty wild. So yeah, this form is, um, yeah, to go a little bit deeper. And you just spoke a, a message uh, about our bodies. Um, but I want to go deeper into what happens to our bodies yeah, yeah. Um, after we die. Yeah. The, 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 just to comment on what you said there in the beginning is mm-hmm. that it is, it's kind of, it, it's, it's unfortunate uh, yeah. in, in our preaching that we feel the need to be so filled with entertainment. Mm-hmm. Now, I know, look, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not denouncing that there needs to be uh, there needs to be creativity in communication, yeah. or, or otherwise people just get bored. So there's nothing Correct. wrong with humor. There's nothing wrong with with uh, with asking God to help you make the passage. The passage mm-hmm. is already living, but yeah. to, to help you understand it to a degree that it can it can be presented in yeah. a live way. And that's that is the challenge of of communicators. Yeah. The unfortunate thing is that we dramatize things that aren't mm. meant to be dramatized, and we we come up with our own little creativity on something that, while it's entertaining and fun to listen to, it's just not biblically accurate. And we we don't yeah. seem to have a passion for biblical accuracy like we did in the past. Yeah. We have more of a passion. Well, you know, we have a saying, "Will this preach?" So, mm-hmm. it, it, matter of fact, it, it may not be biblical. We say, but it'll preach, which means Ooh. that. You know, if you're looking for an audience and you can kind of dramatize things and get them uh, have what I call a pep rally, which is also are from good from time to time is not a bad thing. Yeah, but it there's doesn't seem to be a lot of passion in pursuit of the truth of Scripture. So, uh, if you look historically when it comes to our faith, mm. uh, you you have heresy when you have somebody you have one man or woman come along and all of a sudden claim authority. Yeah. And typically it's different from what is viewed to be truth in the last 2,000 years of, yeah. of the evangelical world, of the church world. And that ought to be a red flag to you immediately. Right. Uh, you know, I think of Seventh-day Adventism. Uh, I know that's not mm-hmm. going to be popular with a lot of Seventh-day Adventists, but, yeah, yeah. but you have people in their movement like Ellen G. White that come along and claim to have some kind of an authority and give you a different perspective mm-hmm. on something, and suddenly that becomes the major. You major in something that is minor. Yeah. And there have been movements like that, especially when it comes to uh, the afterlife and what happens when we die. Right. So you've got everything from uh, things like uh, conditional immortality. Mm-hmm. So there's the view that says that immortality is conditional on you receiving Christ. Therefore, yeah. if you don't receive Christ, you're just annihilated and wiped mm. out of existence. So what they will tell you is that that means that that uh, heaven is everlasting, but hell is not. Hmm. Hell is temporary and you're punished and then annihilated. The problem yeah. is, the simple problem with that is the same language that's used, for instance, instance the translated word everlasting, from mm-hmm. everlasting to everlasting. So the same word that is used to describe heaven is described is used to describe hell. So yeah. if you say that that heaven is everlasting, then you have to say that hell is everlasting. Yeah, but you can't, people won't like that. People won't like that. <laughs> you can't you can't say that. Well, yeah, hell is temporary. Heaven is everlasting. Yeah, that's a problem. Conditional immortality, and that's mm-hmm. a that was a popularized view uh, by by breakoffs of mm-hmm. e- evangelical Christianity, and the people actually ended up majoring in the, uh, in something that was. Was 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 the error actually? It just wasn't well, consistent with scripture. I've also played a part. I mean, I I've had times in my life mm-hmm. where I'm trying to understand. So let's take the idea of Hades in paradise. Uh-huh. So in the Old Testament, you had the Greek, you had the Hebrew idea of Sheol, but all mm-hmm. Sheol was is the grave. It's the yeah. pit. Mm-hmm. So David says, "Don't let my my soul waste away in Sheol," or right. "Don't right. let my soul go down to the mm-hmm. pit." They had no understanding in the Old Testament at all. Okay, they had no understanding that there was something after life as far as living. Now, somehow David got some kind of revelation from the Holy right. Spirit when he said, when his son died, he will not return to me, but I will go to him. But, mm. but still yet, he could mean the grave. Right. You just don't know. Yeah. And then when we come to the New Testament, by then a, an idea had formed on the, on the idea of paradise. Mm-hmm. And paradise is a paradiso, which is a word that just refers to beautiful gardens. Yeah. But somehow those beautiful gardens started to represent a place that you go when you die, but we still mm-hmm. had no understanding of it. And the Greeks and the Romans definitely didn't have an understanding yeah. of it. 
So it's not until Jesus starts talking about heaven and about what comes next and about uh, everything being redeemed and being, mm-hmm. being made right that we started getting an idea of what happens next. And then when yeah. Paul comes around in 1 Corinthians 15 and starts giving us a, a, a pretty specific things about what yeah. kind of body we'll have in the world that is to come. Yeah. So if you collectively take all of Scripture in a problem passage, I say problem in the in the sense that, man, what, what's Jesus communicating here? Mm-hmm. In Luke 16, when he talks about the rich man and Lazarus. Yeah. So you remember both die, mm-hmm. and then one goes to a place of torment, and one goes to a place of Father Abraham's bosom. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, what is so we're trying to figure out what are the symbols, mm-hmm. or is Jesus making reference to anything at all considered what happens after you die? Or is he just simply saying that there's two places? One yeah. is good, one is bad. Uh-huh. Or is the whole point of the parable, if it is a parable, yeah. because if it is a parable, it's the only parable where Jesus gives someone a specific name, mm. Lazarus. Yeah. Okay, so, and the, the rich man or dives or whatever we say, is he a, a public, is he a figure or is he a, 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 a genuine, authentic man? You know? Yeah, so, yeah so right. So the, the, the problem with the parable is that it doesn't fit your norm of other parables. Mm-hmm. So is Jesus then telling the real story of two people who died, and now he's telling you what happened to them? Mm-hmm. One goes into Abraham's bosom, which would be paradise, which would be a good place, while the yeah. other goes to a place of torment. Mm. So as a result of that passage, by the way, a a philosophy evolved in that when you die, mm-hmm. you don't actually go to heaven. You go to a waiting place, mm. which they called paradise. Mm-hmm. And so the doctrine was that you've got Hades, yeah. But Hades has two sides, the place mm-hmm. of torment and the place of paradise, and you can't cross over from one to the other based on the parable of the yeah. rich man and Lazarus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> what, what do you do with this? <laughs> right. Well, I think, first of all, you let it, you let a parable be a parable and not right. try to make too much doctrine or theology out of the parable. Let the parable teach you a valuable lesson of Correct. there's a good place and there's a bad place. Mm-hmm. So I like to go back to the Apostle Paul, mm-hmm. who said that to die is gain. Mm-hmm. In other words, he says, I, I, I would like to be here with you, but I'd also like to be with Jesus. Right. So in Paul's mind, when you die, you absent from the body, present with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Whatever that is, you immediately go into the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. There's another theory that developed, and this is where the Seventh-day Adventists come in again, <laughs> this idea of soul sleeping. Hmm. So what they would say is that the and also uh, the Jehovah Witnesses. Yeah. So when you die, the soul goes into a sleeping. So, the, but, but this theory is based on the erroneous idea that the soul is not eternal. Mm. So they say the soul is not eternal; it has to be resurrected eternal. I would say no. The soul is eternal from the get go. Yeah. It's non material. It is meant to live forever. Mm. The question is, where is it going to live? In the presence of God or outside the presence of God? Oh. So with the Seventh-day Adventists and the Jehovah Witnesses, they came up with the idea that when you die, you sleep. Mm -hmm. And so when you die, you're just nothing. You're just asleep. And then on the day of uh, the second coming, you are revived. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you go to the place of suffering or the place of life, eternal torment or Mm -hmm. life with Christ for eternity. The problem again with that, the reason that doesn't work is Paul says to die is gain. I don't think right. he planned on sleeping. Yeah. And I think it's only a theory you have to come up with if, if you think the soul is not eternal. Yeah. But the soul is eternal. It's mm-hmm. non-material. And so all of us, there is no Greek word, to my knowledge, there is no Greek word that is translated death that means the end of existence. Mm. It just means the separation. Thanatos means the separation of the body and the soul. Yeah. The body dies, the soul lives. The question is, where does it live? Mm. And that's where the Apostle Paul helps us. Yeah. It's where he says, you know, to die is gain. Uh, absent mm. from the body, I'm absent from the body, yeah. present with the Lord. Mm-hmm. So when you die, the Bible, there's strong indication that when you die, you immediately go into the presence of the Father. Mm. Now, are you in heaven? No, because heaven does not exist until Jesus returns. Hmm. When he returns, if, if heaven is the renewed heaven and earth of yeah. where we are now, mm-hmm. then it doesn't exist in the present. Hmm. So what is he preparing while he's away? Well, he's preparing the new heaven and the earth. Mm-hmm. But remember, and this is going to be hard for us to handle, yeah. but remember, he's not limited by time and space, so he's already there. Correct. So in our mind, the way we experience time and space, we're not on the new heavens and the new earth. We're, we're still on the one that's been tainted by sin. Right. He is preparing right now the new heavens mm-hmm. and the new earth that will come into 
full order yeah. when he returns. Mm. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And our bodies will be conducive to live in the new heaven and the new earth, mm -hmm. which I mentioned this weekend, will not be subject to physics in the way that we're used to being subject to physics. Right, right. So all of that to simply say that the Bible, despite all these theories, your soul is immortal. It is mm -hmm. always meant to live forever. You were created uh, with a body, a tent that will pass away, but the soul will move on. Right. It will live on. Mm -hmm. And so what Jesus came to do is save our souls from sin yeah. and death so that we could be given a new body conducive mm -hmm. to the new heavens and earth with our soul that will be immortal, that has always been immortal, that will yeah. live forever. And so the soul, we talk about saving souls. And I think, right. actually, I think that's accurate mm. because the soul is going to live. But right. when it's unsaved, it goes to a place out of the presence of God. So as we talk about hell, what is hell? Mm. So hell is the Greek word Gehenna. Yeah. It is a representative of the pit that's mm. around the city of Jerusalem. So when a criminal died and his body or her body remained unclaimed, they would be sent to Gehenna, the yeah. Valley of Gehenna, and those bodies would burn and the smoke would rise forever yeah. and ever. Okay, So it's interesting that Jesus decides decide to, to invoke the word Gehenna yeah. as a way for us to understand hell. Right. So hell then is the place of ruin. Mm. It is the place where there is no life. It, it's, it's a living death. Yeah. It's darkness. It's separation. It's all the things that we don't want. Yeah. The things that make life worth living, community, fellowship, yeah. oneness with the creator, God, friendship, kindness, you know, all the fruits of the spirit, all, everything yeah. wrapped up into into the fruits of the Spirit, into who the Spirit is in our lives. Yeah. Those are the things we really want. I mean, that's really what we want, right? We want right. to love each other. We want community. We want love. Correct. We want accepting. We want belongingness. Yeah. And we want the death cloud to be removed. Yeah. So heaven is described as exactly that. Mm. Where hell is described as a symbol like Gehenna, yeah. where wherever it is and wherever we go, yeah. we know that two things happen. Number one, God, and how this happens, we don't know because we're not God. Right. God has decided that if you want to live without Him, mm -hmm. He's going to let you have that desire. Yeah. yeah. So you live in a realm, wherever that realm is, without the presence of God. But when God re removes His presence from any place, evil takes right. over completely. Mm -hmm. Even in our world right now, we think about how bad it is, but were God to remove his presence completely, it'd be a lot worse than it is now. Right. There are times when God says, this far, no further. So hell is the place where God stops saying, this far, no further. Mm -hmm. And you live in a place because you've wanted to live in a place without God. Mm -hmm. And so you're not given a second chance. Yeah. You have that chance right here on earth. God gives you all kinds of mercies. Yeah. If you reject him here on earth, and you say, I don't need God. I don't want to live with God. I don't want a world like that. And there are actually people who do that. <laughs> yeah. Then God says, okay, not my will, but yours be done from yeah. C.S. Lewis. Mm. You live in a realm where there's going to be obviously darkness, yeah. isolation, mm. separate. Is there fire? I don't know. Is the fire <laughs> just a, a symbol to tell us it's tormenting? Probably. Yeah. Because it's a place of darkness, depression, mm -hmm. isolation, there's no belonging, there's no acceptance, there's no nothing, and that would be a horrible, horrible eternity. Right. Whereas heaven is the place that when you die, to die is gain. Yeah. So absent from the body, present with the Lord, you go into the presence of God, and that's going to be beautiful. Yeah. But I don't. I can't tell you everything that happens. It's, I just know you don't want to come back. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that whatever it is, it's unbelievable. And yeah. maybe, maybe it is best described by paradise. Mm. But paradise were these beautiful gardens uh, yeah. that the emperors owned, where there's just beauty and yeah. peace, mm. and 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 uh, kind of like uh, you know the, the Lord's uh, in Psalm 23, where He says, you know, you lead me by by streams of water, oh, yeah. quiet mm. water, mm. Uh, you restore my soul. So these gardens are representative of, of Psalm 24, yeah. of where there's just peace and there's mm -hmm. there's there's confidence, there's hope, there's no yeah. death cloud. So you you go into the presence of the Lord immediately when you die. There's no doubt in my, our minds about that. Yeah. As soon as you die, you're you know you're you're not in the casket, you're not in mm. the grave. Boom, into the presence of the Lord because you belong to the Lord. The soul yeah. belongs to God. He's the yeah. Creator, Sustainer. And whatever happens when you go there is beauty and wonder, mm -hmm. but you're not in the final place of heaven yet mm -hmm. to where we'll all be together in that created new heaven, new yeah. earth, and new order. So in summary, that is the message of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is no soul sleeping. There is yeah. no conditional immortality. Mm -hmm. There is no 
Hades waiting place, a good side and a bad side. Yeah. The bottom line is when you die, you go into the presence of the Lord. And when you go into the presence of the Lord, you have all things good. Now, yeah. if you if you are not a believer and you rejected Christ, then you go in, you go outside of the presence of mm-hmm. the Lord. Which interestingly enough, Gehenna is outside the city of Jerusalem. Right. The city of the walls of Jerusalem are symbolic all through the New Testament, especially the book of Revelation, yeah. of the people of God inside. And if you're outside, you're outside the presence of God. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense that God would use Gehenna or Christ would use Gehenna to represent what yeah. afterlife would be outside of the presence of God. Yeah. And there's smoke and there's burn and there's torture and there's pain and there's suffering. Yeah. But it's not like God it's not like God, when you die outside of God's presence, holds you in his hand and just pummels you for right, eternity. Right, I think right. I'm just going to yeah. pummel you for eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he gives you the full ramifications of the free will decision that you made while you're living yeah. to live outside of the presence of God. You've just not used your head and yeah. been wise enough to know that if God removes his presence, there is nothing good. Mm-hmm. All goodness is removed. Right. And so that's what hell truly is. Isolation, right. separation from the good mercy and and kindness and 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 power of God yeah. to bring all mm-hmm. things good into your life. Yeah. So that's the difference between the two. And so in hell, are you given a body? I don't know. Yeah. I, there's no promise of a glorified body right. for those who are absent from God. Right. The promise of a new heaven and a new earth and a glorified body are only to believers. Yeah. yeah. Those who are apart from God, it 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 must just be the most horrible isolation, loneliness darkness Mm -hmm. that you could ever want to experience. But it's a decision you made. Yeah. You decided you were going to go this way, and God handed you over to your depravity. Yeah. I know I said a lot of things. That was a lot. (laughs) That was a lot in a short amount of time. What what comes to your mind? Anything at all? Um, uh, One thing that comes to mind is a quick story of my grandpa. Right before he he was passing away, um, he told my mom, I, I think he told my grandma as well. Uh, and as you know, my, my grandpa was a, a pastor. Yeah. And so when he was close to the end, uh, he told my grandma and he told my mom and he said, he said, uh, don't, don't go see me at the gravesite. He's, and he said, because I'm not there. Yeah. Um, and that's significant because a lot of people believe, yep. right. Oh, if I go visit, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, somehow some way interconnected I, i'm reaching back but yet if specifically for christ followers obviously we have this hope that saying uh your your soul isn't there yeah. it's in a better place yeah. I, you know i've never been to my mom's grave yeah all my brothers have but it's not i understand why my dad used to go just to mm. change the flowers right, right he right. just wanted the flowers <laughs> to be fresh yeah yeah uh, but i my my dad never talked to my mother at the grave right yeah exactly uh, I can understand why you think it puts you in proximity, but it depresses me. Because why would I want to go to remind me of death? Right, correct. I'd like, if I'm going to talk to my mom, you know, first of all, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I mean, if I think about her, I'm going to think about her in the sense that she's with with Jesus now. Yeah. But I I see your point. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't even want to, I mean, I'm I'm one of those guys that don't, I don't even want a funeral, really. (laughs) Can you just keep on going with your life? If you want to celebrate my life, okay, but let's not talk too much about it. And the other thing is, you know, you get the problem with, the Bible does say there's a time for mourning. Right. Uh, So, you know, people talk about, I want my funeral to be one big party. Okay, but don't rob people of mourning their loss. Yeah, yeah, right. Let let them mourn because it's okay to mourn loss. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, even though he knows he's going to cause him to rise from the dead. Right. Don't rob people of their mourning. I get it, but I don't, you know, don't want a long funeral. Don't want, oh, he's gone. No, I'm not there. I'm with Mm -hmm. Jesus, and there is a point at which you celebrate, which is why, notice Paul says, we mourn. But mm-hmm. not like the world. Correct. So we still mourn, but not like the world, yes. because on the other side is we know where they are. Yes, correct. It's almost as if in in the present time, yes, this body is not with us, but I have hope that this person is in the next uh, place, the next best place. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, I mourn for the for the present time in the sense of like I don't have what we used to have. But I hope for lo- the longing of when I do see that yeah. person again. Yeah. Kind of what you were talking about with your mom of, of like um, how you said, I can't wait to get to that place where yeah. I get to see my mom again. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the greatest uh, ramifications, one of the worst ramifications of not growing in your relationship with Jesus and in mm-hmm. the Word yeah. is this issue right here. Mm-hmm. When you grow in your relationship with Christ and you grow in your knowledge of the Word, you develop a certainty of, mm-hmm. of life after death. 
It, now, is it 100%? It, I, don't, I don't think that's possible. Yeah. But you have this overwhelming evidence through your relationship with Jesus and through the spoken word. There's this unbelievable certainty that happens in you that when you die, you face it. And, and I've mm-hmm. seen, I've met people, you you, you know, you're, there's still a bit of uncertainty in your life, but you're certain that you're going to meet Jesus, yeah. and you're certain that you're going to be with Him in heaven. You're not certain about everything that happens between, you know, it's like Woody Allen, I'm not afraid to die. I just right. don't want to be there when it happens. Yeah. There's always this thing that, okay, what's going to happen near the end? Nobody wants to suffer. Correct. Nobody does. Yeah. But there is, a, there is a heavy price to pay for the lack of discipleship. Yeah. And, right. and the heaviest price is, is it is possible to live mm-hmm. with incredible amount of joy uh, even in the midst of everything falling apart around you, because right. your soul knows. Your, yeah, that's it. That's what it is. Your mm. soul knows. I think yeah. there's. I think your soul knows things you don't. Sometimes mm. it knows where it came from. Yeah. It knows where it's going. Yeah. And when you're a Christ follower, it gives it an enormous amount of peace that even right. your doesn't manifest itself all the time in the physical body. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I believe that a lot. One thing I didn't say today is, you know, we always we're always quick to point out that. We don't want our teenagers to make decisions because their brain's not fully developed until they're 25, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think in sin, our, we, we were tainted. Mm. And there, I was trying to express this this weekend, but there's a sense in which our knowledge has been impacted yeah. because of sin. Mm. Uh, it, it, our spiritual brains are not fully deformed or fully formed yet. <laughs> yeah. When we get to heaven, they, they become fully formed. Right. And that's what I was trying to say, that we see things now that we should have seen a long right. time ago that were blocked and tainted by sin. Right, right, right. But I do think the more discipleship that's in your life, you become more spiritually woke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And your brain begins to be fully developed and you see things as they really are. It's yeah. a heavy price to pay yeah, for, for sure. a lack of worship and discipleship and uh-huh. Bible reading. Heavy price. Correct. Yeah. And I want to go back to um kind of what you're describing with heaven and hell, especially with Gehenna, there's been a movement um, kind of similar to the Jesus Seminar, actually honestly stems from it, of this idea that Gehenna was only meant to be a materialistic thing, uh, mm. a, a teaching of saying like that that is not hell. What Jesus was saying was just a more literal sense of like you're literally going to be pushed out of Jerusalem um, and mm. that because of that, hell isn't real. Yeah. Um, and then that, that kind of like brings in this universalist approach mm. of, of uh, everybody is saved. We don't have to do <laughs> anything about it. Yeah. Um, what would you say, given everything that you just said, to a, to somebody who comes up to you and says, you know, yeah, but we're, we're all saved anyways and hell is not really real because the word Gehenna didn't mean hell. It, it just meant uh, uh a place outside of Jerusalem. Yeah. Well, forget all about Gehenna then. Forget all about that. And now yeah. let's go to the other uh, uh, Pauline epistles and the mm-hmm. book of Revelation. What I challenge you to do, if you really want to know this, if, if you're really interested or you're yeah. just trying to justify, mm-hmm. if you're really interested, look at the descriptions used for heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. They're exactly the same. Yeah. In time, yeah. everlasting from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. Uh, if you look at that, you can't, you would have to say then, if you apply that to hell, you'd have to apply it to heaven and say heaven is also not yeah. something that's yeah. eternal, not everlasting. It's just a figurative speech and there's going to be goodness, but right. nobody knows. The other thing is when you start talking about the fact that we're all saved anyway and it's all going to end up the same place, here's your problem. Mm-hmm. That tells me you don't, You've never read the the Bible and understood the holiness of God. Mm-hmm. You've you've you only thinking about you only think about practical outworking for your own life. Yeah. You've never really thought about what is God like. Who is God? Yeah. If you can read the scriptures and tell me that God does not require payment for sin, mm. then let's have the conversation. Yeah. But if you read the scripture, you're going to realize. From the get-go, from the establishment of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. Think about it. Yeah. People ask me, why would God want them to kill animals? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> well, the shedding of blood was supposed to show them the seriousness of their mm-hmm. sin and how it separated them from a holy God, yeah. but also to be a forerunner, precursor to the Lamb of God was going to yeah. be sacrificed on a cross mm-hmm. so that the requirements of the holiness of God could be met. Yeah. If you think for a moment that you can be accepted before God because you're good or because you have more good than you do bad, you yeah. don't understand who God is. You've, right. you've created God in your own image. Right. And I remember being very frustrated with Rob Bell when mm, in, yeah. in the days of Rob Bell when he was trying to suggest, as Joel Osteen does, uh-huh. when they were both trying to suggest that somehow 
hell is figurative, heaven is a reality. No, yes, you yeah. can't have it both ways now. Right, right, you, right. It, does, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work grammatically, yeah. and it doesn't work in the teachings of Jesus or the Apostle Paul. So I really challenge you to go, yeah. and when you read passages describing any passage that describes judgment, Mm. And justice in the yeah. in the in the in the New Testament, and any yeah. passage that describes uh, uh, rewards and yeah. redemption. Notice the structure; mm. it's always the same. Yeah. So you can't have a temporary or a figurative hell and have a literal heaven. You can't yeah. do it. Yeah. It doesn't right. work. And you can't have a figurative heaven and have a literal hell either. Right. You got to right. have both of them on the same yeah. page. So whatever one is, the other is as well. Right. Correct. And I think that's intentional. Yeah. To 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 have that kind of language so that there'd be no misunderstanding. Oh, a hundred percent. And and I feel like this goes back to uh, the whole mission of God. Uh, the the fact that he wants to show us a love that is so unconditional to a point of saying, if you really want to know my, the fullness of my love, well then, yeah, this, this has to pan out in, in this way. Because if, if we believe in the universalist or like that, that approach of, yeah. of hell being figurative and heaven a reality, literal, yeah. uh, then in that sense, the work of Christ really does not hold any any weight. Kind of what Paul was saying was like, if we don't believe in the resurrection, then everything is in vain. Everything has yeah. has faltered out. Yeah. It, it, to me, in my mind, Drew, it makes it even worse. It makes God mm. a masochist. And yeah. here's why. Yeah. If, there, if, if the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus is not necessary for salvation, why mm. on earth does God allow it? Yeah. That's yeah. that's ruthless. Mm -hmm. The punishment and torture of his own son when yeah. it's not essential. Yeah. So evidently, this is essential. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. blood of Christ is essential to save us, to cover right. our sin and send us in an eternity with Christ. Right. And when I hear these theories come out, I'm thinking, oh man, you 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 just got too smart for your own britches. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you think you're really smart now, and that yeah. God is such a God of love that His holiness doesn't matter. Yeah. Judgment and justice doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And yet in our world, I ask you, in our world, does justice matter? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, for this world to make any sense at all, there's mm -hmm. got to be a day when justice is going to roll like a river. Right. And that's why Paul uses legal language when it comes to mm. our being justified. Yeah. He says, yeah, we're sinners, but you've been declared righteous yeah. by the power of God into salvation, which is mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. The forgiver of your sins, the one who mm -hmm. atoned for your sins. I mean, as you get more and more into world uh, views and into philosophies, you you know, it goes, I hate to say this, it goes all the way back to a conversation I had in New Zealand once with somebody who was in government. Uh, and that is, how do I determine what worldviews are accurate mm. and what worldviews are not accurate? And the answer is coherency. It really is coherency. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I tell you something about origin, is it consistent with my belief in meaning, morality, and destiny? Mm. If it's not consistent all the way from the from the top to the bottom, then you've got a pro it's incoherent. Then yeah. you've got a problem, which mm -hmm. which to me defines not only to me but with anybody with logical thinking, that sense of incoherency will describe just about any worldview outside of Christianity. Right. Right, it really right. will. Jesus says, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to mm -hmm. know what truth is, you come to me. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. it's up for grabs." So right. I, it, it's it's sad and it's saddening that you have Correct. you have scholars that what I call that know just enough to be dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. to where you go to a passage in the New Testament and you're trying to say that this is figurative, but this is literal, and you yeah. and you don't you're not doing it justice. You're not yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah, you know what? If you want to be safe, let's try to let's try to figure out what the church believed for two thousand years mm -hmm. and why. Yeah. And that's a pretty that should be a pretty good benchmark. Yeah. For for what for what our beliefs should be today. Right. We are a pretty for for a generation that says we're tolerant. We are so arrogant. Yeah. Very. We say that. Oh, well, we know now. Uh -huh. We know what they didn't know for two thousand years. Really. Yeah. You know better than what people who lived within a hundred years of the church mm -hmm. knew about what Jesus taught. You know better now than what they knew. Right. Within a hundred years, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. And so. That's why there's such a, a uh, renewed interest today in early church yeah. history and how the church was formed, what it believed, and why it believed what it believed, yeah. and the Apostles' Creed. Go back to the Apostles' mm -hmm. Creed. I mean, it's 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 beautiful to go back yeah. and study and try to understand. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, I want to uh, not really shift it, but as you were talking, I was thinking of, okay, as, as I'm hearing all of this, 
the practical, not the practical, I would say just the, the questions that I probably would see now in our culture today would be, okay, so then what is the meaning of our bodies, uh, the, the, our fleshly bodies? Um, and obviously, you, you talked a lot about it in your sermon, but I, I think of uh, uh, Sam Albury wrote in a book, uh, one of his recent books, and he said, our souls aren't Tupper, our, our bodies aren't Tupperware for our souls to live in. Hmm. Our, our, our bodies have meaning. Yeah. Um, and so, especially in our especially in our world today, where our bodies can either be seen as something God didn't want me to have, so hmm. therefore I must change it. Yeah. Um, how is that significant to the death of our bodies and and kind of like our souls? Yeah. Well, two two things. Number one, I do think the purpose of the body and is enjoyment. Um mm. uh, when you eat, when you, I mean, there's so many enjoyable things in the flesh. Yeah. And yeah, those yeah. are, when you experience those pleasures, they're mm -hmm. supposed to point you to God. Yeah. Thank, in, in gratitude and thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So that's why we pray before we eat, you know, yeah. and I enjoy yeah. a good meal. You know, there's somebody I wanted, you know, this was really good, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then it, let's go back to intimacy between man and a woman, husband and wife. Yeah. That's supposed to cause us to glorify God. Mm -hmm. God did not have to give the gift of enjoyment. Sex yeah. could have been just procreation, that's right. it. Mm -hmm. But there's an enjoyment and there's an intimacy and there's a oneness that comes with it that is yeah. supposed to point us to some degree to the intimacy we are to have with him. Yeah. And so the body is purposeful, no yeah. doubt about mm -hmm. it. However, when we talk about the flesh, we also know that if we don't control uh, or bring into submission our desires to the authority of God's word, then we develop these illegitimate desires that yeah. are fulfilled illegitimately and then yeah. create more illegitimate desires, then they mm -hmm. they bring the body to ruin. Yeah. So everything that God gives us must be experienced within his parameters mm -hmm. because he's the creator designer. Right. But isn't that true of anything? I mean, all right, you, you take a, okay, you take a boat, a, uh -huh. a speedboat. Yeah. That's whoever designed it, creative designer. Right. But if you try to take it and, and race it on the road, on the pavement, You'll destroy it. It wasn't right. designed that mm -hmm. way. So you and I also have bodies that God designed. And if you, yeah. you can use it here, and it's going to be fantastic, but if you use it in a way it was never designed, yeah. that violation brings death, not life. Right. That goes back to this conversation about two men attracted to each other mm -hmm. that engage in homosexual activity. Yeah. The point is from God is that you were not made to function that way. Yeah. There's going to be both emotional and mm -hmm. physical ramifications yeah. that don't bring life, that bring death. No matter what you feel, yeah. and it goes back to it goes back to this. It's not only that, but when I'm 18, remember I said I wanted to sleep with every woman yeah. under, under the sun. Yeah. But God said, you know, you're not fun you're not built to function that way either. Right. If you abuse that, even though you say, because mm -hmm. this is what gets me. I got all these heterosexuals sleeping with each other and calling yeah. themselves Christians and pointing the finger at same-sex yeah. people mm -hmm. as if somehow they're on a higher plateau. Well, in right. God's mind, no, you're not. Right. This is not appropriate, and this is not. Neither right. one's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And if you if you live this way, it does not bring life. Yeah. It yeah. brings death if you violate the parameters. Yeah. When it comes to gender, mm -hmm. God gave you your gender. I know you got that point zero zero four exception. But we yes. can talk about it in a podcast sometime. Correct. Yeah, Now's yeah. not the time. Yeah. But typically, God created male or female. Mm -hmm. And that is a gift to you by God. Your best life will live functioning in that category. Right. If you try to get out of that category, you may have temporary relief of some kind, right. but ultimately it destroys you. We know that by the suicide rate. We know that now mm -hmm. by people who have gone into uh, surgery yeah, and right. have come out and now wish they hadn't. I yeah. mean, it's, oh. Yeah. But so it, it, it comes down to where's your authority, no matter what your feelings mm -hmm. are like. Yeah. Yeah. Who owns your body? Mm -hmm. God. God, you are the temple of the living God. Yeah. He owns it, which mm -hmm. means if he gave it to you. Now, if there's no God, you got no problem. Do whatever you're going to do. Seriously. Right. If there's no God, do whatever you're going to do. Yeah. If you're chemicals, time plus matter plus chance, no worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you, if, you, if you do acknowledge God exists, and it's, yeah. hard, to, it's hard to assume he doesn't, if yeah. you do believe God exists, then you have to ask, who gave me this body? God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does God want me to do with this body? Yeah. And if you ask those questions and live accordingly, you're going to have a lot more life than you do death. Mm. And so at it, the it, it, end of the day, it's it's where did you come from and where you're going? You came right. from heaven, you're going to heaven. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I feel like the one, we, we need to talk more about that. We could do that later. But um, the significance of our bodies now 
is significant for our bodies later. Absolutely. Um, and that we we have a misunderstanding of what death really is or what death looks like after, um, yeah, after after we've died or after just our viewpoints of hell, our viewpoints of heaven. So to to put those two in the biblical context or in the biblical view. Now we're under, now we come to the place of okay Jesus who who is he and how did he do the things for us to be natural uh, in the natural body form to now be a spiritual body kind of what Paul was talking about yeah. at the, in Corinthians fifteen and I really want to talk about that because I, I think it I feel like even in the beginning of Genesis we've had God desired us to live and steward uh, in His creation and. We have a void because of sin that we we know that there is something supernatural, but we just don't know where to place it, if that makes any sense. Mm. Um, and so how do, when you look at, when Paul is saying the first Adam and the last Adam, first Adam uh, made out of dust, the last Adam is all spiritual. Um, obviously it came in the flesh, but, but um, there's like this negative to produce positive. Um, and in the middle of that is is the work of the cross. Mm. And so this is me trying to honestly summarize no, ahead, what you've been ahead. saying yeah. and everything, but is that we have been living in sin, but because of the last Adam who came, who has supernatural abilities and and was able to put it to the side, put it on the cross. Now our negative is now a positive. Kind of, uh, I forgot where he said it, but he said, in Adam, we all die, but in Christ, we are all made yeah. alive yeah. Uh, in verse 22. And so the significance of that for our bodies, and not only that, but for the place of of heaven. So, so we got to the place where, okay, this is where we're going, but in our present day, or, and when we make that decision, um, I think of like Ephesians when when Paul says, "Every blessing comes from the heavenly places through Jesus Christ." Um, and so, what does that look like for us? Not mm. only to hope in a place, but also to live. Kind of what you said when people said, "Where is heaven?" You said, "Well, you're sitting in it." Yeah. Um, if you want to expand on that, yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, first of all, I want to go back and, and say again that remember, Paul says that you'll have a spiritual body. That seems like an oxymoron. Right, 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 right. What? So, so we do have bodies. Yeah. When you look at the concept, not the, but the reality that Jesus came in flesh mm -hmm, and lived mm -hmm. a sinless life, how did he yeah. do that? That's, that is the question. Right, okay? right. Okay. Because we're told in Hebrews 2 and chapter 4 as well that he became like us in all ways. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, that he would become the uh, sympathetic high priest. So he knows yeah. what we've been through because he's experienced what we've been through. Yeah. The Bible says he also grew in wisdom and stature in Luke chapter 2, which means he set aside omnipotence. Mm -hmm. Not that he wasn't omnipotent. Right. He chose not to use it. Yeah. It's like Superman having X-ray vision but choosing not to use it. Right. It's right. like him being able to fly but chose right. not to fly. Right. So whatever all Jesus had, whatever he left behind, he chose to set it aside for a moment. Mm -hmm. That means he lived the life... We live. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Face the same temptations, tempted in all ways, just like us. Right. Bible, it's exactly what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. I th Hebrews 2.17, right? Yeah, I believe or, so. I get 2.14 and 2.17 mixed up all the time. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus experienced our lives and yet was sinless. Yeah. But we also know that he was in great depth with the Father. Yeah. The relationship between the Father and the Son was mm -hmm. probably like no one has ever had. Yeah. So the thing we're supposed to learn is the deeper we are, it's like I said, discipleship, the deeper we are in relationship with God, the more power we will have to say no to sin. Yeah. Okay. So the body's important now in that it honors God and by doing that. Yeah. If you have no passion to honor God, not that I mean, it, then you're gonna you're gonna fall to sin. Right, 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 right. Okay. So in the life that is to come. Mm -hmm. There's some. There's a tie to. Remember what we said. The seed is connected to the final product. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there is something about us choosing to live, say no to sin and death in the flesh. There's mm -hmm. something there that continues on. Yeah. Yeah. And now, that's where this thing. Uh, that's where I think the thing of rewards comes in. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. The life we live here does matter. Yeah. According yeah, yeah. to the scripture, when we get to heaven, there is a there. There are rewards. Yeah. And you think, well, won't we be jealous of each other? No, that goes back to the other conversation mm -hmm. we already had. No, you'll be loved by God correct, and you'll love correct, God so correct, much. Right. That, so when we get to heaven, I do believe there, is, there are rewards. Yeah. And for those who have lived, uh, not according to the flesh, but the spirit, which is exactly what Paul tells us to do mm -hmm. in Romans 6, right. I think there's a greater degree of opportunity, of 
of authority, uh-huh. of rule, of a higher position. Yeah. And what, how that works itself out, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. But it is there is an importance associated the bo- the seed that is sown in the ground our bodies will yeah. will somehow relate to the body that will be yeah. i just don't know i just yeah. have no idea how yeah. but the body that i think i think what you're saying is even in genesis we were given the uh, authority over creation Correct. to he and is, yes, work yeah. work is not a result of the fall Correct. work and responsibility is a gift to god in the beginning yep. it will also be a gift in the world to come Correct. and it will be directly tied with what god gave us here and how yes. responsible and faithful we were to it right. i don't know exactly how it works itself out but the scriptures yeah. Clear on that. Yeah, and that's a uh, yeah. I feel like that's another podcast for another day of, yeah. of what that reward looks like. Um, and it's not a competition. It's, it's never a competition. You'll be thrilled with whatever you'll you'll be so thrilled. Correct. Because you know whatever you get, you probably deserve yes less. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. And then okay, just the last the last sure. thing to to really like hone in on um, is to really talk about. Uh, we're talking about what happens in the in the heavenly places, or talking about heaven, but then Jesus is also Jesus also brings the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Yeah. And so, what does it look like as we're understanding this? What does it look like to have heaven on earth? What I think what and this goes a long back a long way back since Christ, but you could you if you trace all the way back to Jesus. Mm. You would see movements that developed out of the Jesus movement that were not in effect before Christ. Mm. Uh, Here's something simple. Hospitals. Yeah. yeah. Where people actually care for the sick and the dying yeah. and those who were contagious. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's something that was unheard of. Mm-hmm. So there are movements that happened out of the Christ movement. And the kingdom of God is like that. It's yeah. mercy and grace and care and concern. And so what Jesus is saying is because my spirit is placed in my people, they're a new community in the world, and they're going to bring about things on planet Earth that mm. were not here yeah. before Christ was here. Yeah. Because I'm now not limited to time and space. I'm in the heart and the mind of every believer. Yeah. Therefore, the kingdom of God is also in the heart and mind of every believer, even yeah. though it's not a full reality yet. Yeah. And it's in the heart and mind of every So every time a, every time that we express the fruits of the Spirit, every time we do something associated with the kingdom of God, it brings the kingdom of God a little bit more in reality yeah. into time and space. But yeah. make no mistake, even though it's here substantially, it's not here in full, right. and it won't be here in full until the kingdom of God comes. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. I Now, when the, when the Bible talks about the kingdom of God in the sense of heaven on earth, yeah. that's where, again, I think that in, in the end of time, mm-hmm. when he says enough is enough, that then the kingdom of God is here in full, yeah. and Okay, this is fun. Yeah. Let me try to do it in a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have a kingdom, you have rulers. Yeah. And you have servants. Mm-hmm. But the servants are thrilled to be part of the kingdom yeah. and to serve the king. Right, right, it's right. not like, oh, it's yeah. not it's not subservient. It's not less than. Yeah. It's not in shackles and chains. Uh-huh. It's like, wow, I get to be part of this. I right. see that in church already. Uh-huh. You know, I, oh, 100%. It, it, figuratively, I'm the lead pastor mm-hmm. and there are people who serve in our ministry yeah. and they don't serve because they're in shackles. They serve because they get the most out of life and enjoyment by right. serving. Mm-hmm. The new kingdom, when it comes in full, we'll all have a role and a part to play. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be happy that we're playing it. Yeah, we're, we're, exactly. we're part of something that is so awesome. Yeah. And so that's how that works itself out. The kingdom is here, but not in full. When the kingdom of God comes, I presently do. Let me just end like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do believe that the kingdom of God is on earth. I believe, Mm -hmm. well, I believe that the earth is refurbished and the, the taintedness of sin is removed. I also think that the galaxies and things that we've never seen have been, God has reserved that. No yeah. eye has seen, no ears. God mm-hmm. has reserved that for those who come to him. I've got much, you think this creation is wonderful? Well, you guys messed it up to some degree because <laughs> of your sin and stubbornness, yeah. but you know what? I'm going to rectify that, but you got no idea of what else I got out there. Yeah. And I that is reserved for, the, for those who have given their life to Jesus. Yeah. So in this kingdom here, so somebody will say, well, wait a minute, doesn't the Bible say there are going to be no more oceans? Hmm. And it doesn't it say there's going to be no more sun. There'll be no no need for the sun. Yeah. I told you there'll be a new order yeah. and a new ap- a new heavens yeah. atmosphere. Uranus, mm-hmm. new heavens and new earth, new land. Yeah. So it will look something like this, but it will be redeemed. Yeah. And when it says there'll be no more, uh, uh, when it says there the what in Revelation one four, talks about mm-hmm. there'll be no more ocean. There'll be no more waters. The oh, ocean. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what? But what it's talking. I, I strongly suggest that what it's talking about, the ocean, remember it was about the waters will give up their dead? Yeah. The, the waters were symbolic of a place where so many people drown death and by sea, by war, yeah. by battle. And basically what we're going to have, we're not going to have no, we're not going to have any more death. The yeah. death is gone. But 
Does that mean we won't have any type of ocean with whales and dolphins? And I, I think I think that would be a, a mistake. Right. I think that you're looking at a deposit. The, yeah. you know, the earth, the seed will go, will die, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the new heavens and the new earth will be conducive in total liberty of the sons and the daughters of God. Yeah. I think what it's going to be. I mean, if we could wake up, if we could have a vision of what it was going to be like, yeah. I think it would just stun us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you it two ways. Number one, of how good it is, but number two how it's not so far out wacky yeah, than most yeah, people yeah. when they think of heaven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're not flying around. We're not angels. <laughs> yeah. We are bodies. We are people mm -hmm. connected yeah. to our previous selves. Yeah. And I think what God does in this, I mean, think about all the good in this world. I mean, mm -hmm. I think of Victoria Falls. You know, that's when I go there, it's like God is yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. are wonders. In the world. Wow, look at this beautiful, the Grand Canyon you got. Yeah. Well, is God just going to wipe all that out? No, I think what he's going to do is remove the taintedness of sin. Yeah. And the question is, what does that look like? Yeah. But here's the thing. He's not going to force you to live with him through eternity. Ooh. So you decide now. Yeah. Now you, you say, well, what I'll do is I'll just do what I want to. Then when I die, I'll say, oh, I want to be with God. <laughs> no. No. You you know in your heart. We have right. this idea that there's going to be people saying, oh, I want to go to heaven. The, the thing the Bible says is for those people who have no interest in God right now, mm -hmm. they're not going to have interest in God when he returns. Yeah. They want their uh, own way. And God's going to give it to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't want to be those people. <laughs> don't want to be those people. Yeah. But I, I don't think the people who think they're those people care. Whoa, right, right. I just don't. Yeah. I, I, whoa, I, I yeah. used to think they're going to, you know, the Bible says there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I, I used to think the gnashing of teeth was meant a, a regret. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. No. No, you you trace that word all the way back, and even in extra biblical literature, what you uh -huh. find is anger. Whoa! Mm, you know, when you get angry, what do you do? Uh, yeah, right. It's like I, I don't care, God. You still mm -hmm. won't have me. I don't care. Right. Do what you. But I am not going to serve you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. They just have never. They they're so angry that they're illogical. Yeah, correct. correct. I am not going to be subservient to anybody. Yeah. They don't realize, but this is God we're talking about. Right. You'll win. Right, right. So yeah. you don't realize that if you're out of the presence of God, there is no good thing. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that first, I was thinking of Jonah as you were talking about that, you know, towards the end of it, where he, he's still, he's still stubborn. <laughs> he still didn't want, no, I, you, I, I know you would, I knew you would save those bad people. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. that's, that's what people, I mean, when, when the idea that people will be just, oh, I changed my mind. No, yeah, no, no. Mm -mm. you, you have your life, your entire yeah. life to decide who yeah. you are and what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And God gives you the full ramifications of your free will decision that you made while on planet earth yeah. for all of you eternity it's yeah. that simple yeah exactly i even think of the the people that uh jesus says that they're going to come to me and say but well, we prophesied in your name we did all this stuff in your name and he says what I, but i never knew you I never knew you and that's a it's very convicting yeah. <laughs> very sure yeah. um, there better be an effort in your life yeah there's not not to merit salvation correct but you yeah. better take a good look at who you are right yeah exactly i think to conclude um something that i love that you said in your sermon really the, the bow on it is that yes we're on our we're on the journey home but yet we have the opportunity to meet the builder you got to meet the builder you have to meet the builder and and that's here on earth you know what i mean and so uh yeah i love that i, love, I, know, I know we're ending but just quickly yeah no, i please. remember asking someone who did not believe in god but believed in heaven mm, interesting i said <laughs> well who okay who 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 builds heaven i mean who so it had to be in somebody's mind, right? Or yeah. do you think it's also time plus matter plus chance? And here's yeah. heaven. Yeah, stunned, totally stunned him. He never, as wise as he was, he had never thought of that question. Whoa! You don't believe in God, but you believe in heaven. Yeah, that is amazing. And how have you never gotten to that question, yeah. even to say who yeah. is the? He who lives is the in person? a very secular world, uh, and the secular worldview, and nobody really. That's yeah. amazing to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You, how can you believe? If you believe in heaven, let me tell you, you believe in God. Right. And if you believe in God, you believe in justice and judgment. Right. Exactly. It just goes right on down. And if you mm -hmm. believe in heaven, you have, believe it or not, you believe that there is justice in the world. Yeah. And yeah. that means you believe in sin. Mm -hmm. And that means you believe in sin ought to be punished. Yes. And that means you believe that people shouldn't be able to do evil and get away with it. Yeah. So you just keep going right down the line. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. exactly. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a very interesting um, story and question and even <laughs> worldview and Obviously, we, we hope that more conversations like this can be able to debunk I those think we things. got to continue this one. Yeah, I think so, Look too. Look for part two very soon. Yeah, very, very soon. But thanks, Pastor Jeff. Yep. It's a good time. You got it.